Um, and let me go over the systems. First, let's talk about the laser system um, and, and how it works. So the laser uh, basically receives a signal uh, from the brain of the machine. So your machine has a brain, it's just a controller in it. And it sends a signal to the laser, uh, to, the, to the power supply of the laser, and it just tells it to turn on and off. And it also tells it with how much intensity to do it. So it tells it you know, how much power to use. So here's a good example of how that works. Uh, take your hand and ball your hand into a fist and then open it back up again. That's on and off. Uh, uh, now make another fist, but this time, you know, be more intense and press harder. Uh, and that's your intensity right there. So that's the same way your brain just sent that signal to your hand to do that. That's all that's happening in the laser. So that's your whole laser beam there. Uh, and then we have beam transmission and you guys sh should be familiar with this because you were working on the uh, alignment and the mirrors needed to you know, be bounced off. I mean, the laser had to be bounced off these three mirrors before it finally uh, goes through the lens and, and out. Um, and, and this is really important, um, but it's really just mirrors. You're just reflecting the laser beam across the, the X, Y, and, and the Z axes. Um, and to get the maximum power from your laser, it's crucial that these mirrors are perfectly aligned, um, specifically because you don't want the laser beam to touch anything. Um, you don't want it to be off of any of the mirrors um, or, and you don't want it to make contact with any part, portion of the laser head, uh, especially the nozzle. Um, so, you know, we set the beam path for you before it ships. So the path should be very, very clean. The beam does go out of alignment and that's why we had you guys adjust the mirrors to make sure the, the alignment was good because during shipping, it comes out of alignment. But that's how the beam transmission works. And I couldn't think of a better way to explain that than showing a, 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 a pool table here. Um, so, you know, this is, this is really a, what I think is the best representation. Imagine this is your, your laser tube here where you've got this cue ball um, and, and your goal really is to hit three walls and get it into this pocket over here. Um, and that's how important that is. This shot, you can only do it um, if you know what you're doing and it's gotta be perfect. So you gotta hit mirror one, right there, mirror two, mirror three. Um, and then of course, here's your focal lens, it'll go through, but you know, this is your nozzle and it's gotta go clean. You know, if it's, if it's bumping any of these walls, you're gonna lose power because that nozzle will just absorb that energy from the laser beam and you don't want that. You want that laser beam to only hit your material. Um, and of course the mirrors and the lens, but nothing else. So that's how crucial it is. If one of these mirrors is slightly off of alignment, it throws off where it hits the next one and the next one. And before you know it, it's bouncing all over your laser head and it might still be coming out of the nozzle, but it's gonna be way less power. Um, so, you know, if you ever encounter an issue where you're like, hey, my laser's not cutting like it was the other day, might wanna check your alignment. It's probably something to do with that. Um, and then there's motion controls. It's all the parts that move in the laser. So the brain of the machine, that, that controller, it's gonna send signals to drivers. And those drivers are the little boxes I showed you on the first slide that, that look like a little time bomb. All those drivers do is talk to each one of the motors. So there's a motor that moves your, your laser head left to right. There's one that moves that, that long gantry arm forward and backward. And there's a motor that's used to raise and lower your table, X, Y, and Z. Um, and all the drivers do is tell it on or off and spin forward, or spin backwards. It's, um, it, it's kind of, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's really funny. It's like an old treasure map kind of thing where you're getting written instructions and it's like, take 10 paces to the north, take 10 paces east. That's exactly how that works. So um, if, if your laser was going to cut a square, it is literally going to tell it to move 10 paces north, 10 paces east, 10 paces south, 10 paces west that's a square in your laser. Super simple stuff. Um, you don't need to know how it works, but you need to know it's simple. And it's, and you know, if any of these things fail, it really is an easy thing to fix. <clears throat> so here is basically everything we've talked about, the whole laser tube, um, the laser beam, here's your beam transmission with the mirrors. You don't see the motors in this picture, um, but it, Everything here has the intelligence of a four gang light switch in your house. So if you got one of these on your wall um, and you know how to use it, that's what's going on inside your laser. Now, granted, it's doing it several thousand times simultaneously. That laser is turning on and off like crazy. 
um, and these motors are spinning forward and backwards, you know, any number of times. But that's all your controller is doing. Um, it's it really is just that simple. So um, not intimidating stuff. It really isn't. It's um, it, there's some really really rudimentary uh, things happening here, and they're just various little systems working together. So a lot of times, you know, uh, if if one component of a system fails, um, it's you know you can you can hone in on that really easily if you know you know kind of how all this stuff works, and then just swap a part out. Um, there are sensors. There are a total of six of them throughout the whole machine. Uh, and same for us, you know, we rely on those center sensors to interpret the outside world. Um, so it just sends information back to the machine. Um, and, and it's, it's really simple. It, it really is one of those things where uh, it keeps your machine from crashing into the walls. Uh, it keeps you from firing the laser if the lid is open. And it also keeps the laser from firing if there's no water running through the, uh, through the chiller or through the laser tube. So that's the whole sensor system, uh, sensory system in the machine. Uh, there's a cooling system, which you guys are aware of. Um, and, and that's really just an onboard chiller. It's designed to take heat away from that laser tube. That's all it does. The laser tube is made of glass. So if it gets too hot, it'll crack. Um, so it's super ideal that it takes heat away. If you've got a Mira 5 or a Mira 7, you've got what's called a passive cooling system. And just think of that as a ceiling fan in your house. Um, you know, it's good for taking your ambient temperature down a couple degrees, um, but that's it. And really only necessary, these machines uh, only have 40 or 60 watts, so they don't get that hot. Um, but if you've got a Mira 9 or you got one of the Novas and you're working with a lot of power, that's where you need something equivalent to like an air conditioner where you can set the temperature and it'll drop it and it'll hold that temperature for you. Because those have bigger laser tubes, bigger power supplies, so they get much hotter. So that's the difference there. Just think of it as a ceiling fan and, a, and an air conditioner. Uh, and then your exhaust system, we talked about it. You got the blower inside, which it's designed to just, you know, pull smoke out, but it's also, you know, supposed to be bringing air in like we talked about. There should be a nice stream of air going into your machine across the top of your material and pulling, you know, the smoke out the back. Um, so again, if you, if you install in a tight space, um, or somewhere where there's low air airflow going on um, definitely helps to install an inline fan where you're pulling the fumes rather than pushing them. Far more effective and less susceptible to leaking. Um, and uh, I think this might be the last slide here for, for the system. There's an air system. We talked about it. A lot of people confuse this with the exhaust. This is, again, this is an air pump. Um, it's designed to blow out the flame. Um, so it's pushing air out of your nozzle down to your material. Um, but it's also um, protecting your focal lens. So it creates a little bit of, of, of pressure inside that nozzle. So smoke can't go back inside of the nozzle and dirty your lens. Um, the other thing it does is it clears the path for your laser beam so that your laser beam can actually do what it needs to do. Ever tried getting a tan and, a, and you know, a, a cloud gets in front of the sun? That's exactly what smoke will do to your laser beam. Uh, if, you're, if you're trying to cut and you got smoke in the way, um, you're not going to get a whole lot of heat down your material. It's going to reflect off of that smoke. So that air system is really designed to remove um, that smoke out of the way so the laser beam can hit your material um, and won't reflect off of there. Uh, and that's why we recommend upgrading your air system if you're going to do a lot of cutting, particularly thick material, because the thicker the material, the more smoke you're creating, the more power you're using. Um, and it's going to take more air to clear that smoke out and also more air to keep that flame down. So if you're trying to make some cuts and you're getting a lot of big flare ups, that might be a good, a good time um, to, to really think about upgrading your air system.